Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to this live stream, uh, which I'm very excited for. We are going to have one of the most prominent trainers, teachers out there on the internet, a very strong chess player himself and one of my favorite streamers, teachers, trainers and so on, Daniel Naroditsky. Uh, so before I get him on the screen, a very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, Daniel has recently uh, released a course uh, on the Jobawa London uh, along with Grandmaster Alexander Bortnik and it's basically 1 d4 then knight c3 bishop f4 and we are going to talk about it today and I hope that all of you can hear me well and if you can just let me know and I will uh, invite Daniel on the stream uh, and then we can take it forward so okay all good all good let's awesome. have it and uh, hello daniel hi sagar thank you so much for having me it's always an honor to come on <laughs> it's uh, wonderful and daniel you uh, you have uh, done something very interesting recently you have launched something new uh, and today we are going to learn something on that so can you tell us a bit about uh, the, the course that you have just launched? First of all, I promise this isn't a 5 a.m. beer. It's sparkling water. Uh, <laughs> no, it's yeah. just my favorite brand. My favorite brand comes in this bottle that everybody thinks I'm like ch chugging beers at, at 5 a.m., you know? <laughs> but so you did not sleep. Uh -huh. Like I wrote to you at 2 a.m. I thought, okay, now you'll yeah. go to sleep and then you would wake up at 6 because that's what the, the local time is at that at where you are, right? Yeah, it's 545 in Charlotte. Um, I was streaming actually late, late at night. And so the last few days I've been commentating the women's candidates, which uh, for me starts at 3 a.m. But I join the commentary at 6. So I end up streaming and then I'll sleep after I finish. So my sleep schedule has got not that it was particularly good to begin with, but now it's gotten shifted to nocturnal hours. Man, and you look so fresh <laughs> without sleep. Well, you know what they say, if you do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Ah, nice. Wonderful. <laughs> so so, so I, I can give a little backstory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. Yeah, no, uh, just a, as a bit of backstory, it is, in fact, my first course. And again, it's, it's I'm so grateful at the opportunity to, to share uh, a little bit of backstory and a little bit of the detail of the course. Um, uh, obviously, I, I want to reassure everybody at the at the very outset that 99% of my content is always going to remain free. Mm. And this isn't some, you know, oh, you know, Naroditsky's taking the dark path of, you know, selling all of his stuff, like not at all. I love putting stuff out. And uh, it's just that over the last couple of months, you know, people, students, friends have come up to me and basically said, you know, you should really consider putting out some premium content and people really like what you have to, to put out. Uh, so you should really consider doing some stuff that people can get if they want to go above and beyond and really get some of your, you know, high level premium content. So Sasha Bordnick and I have been friends uh, for many years. We actually kind of bonded around 2016, 2017 over the fact that we both played the Jabava London. And back then we were basically the only two GMs other than Jabava himself who were playing it regularly online and over the board. So there was a time before this opening was cool wow. and Bordnick Bordnick was playing it since 2014. I've been playing it since 2015. Uh, so we talked a little bit and then Sasha played a tournament here in Charlotte. Uh, we hung out at the tournament and you know, I kind of turned to him one, one evening at dinner and said, let's, let's do a freaking course on the Jababa London. Let's give it a shot. I've never done anything like this before. Obviously we didn't want to go through chessable because with how busy I am and, you know, we just wanted to do our own thing. We wanted to do a trial course, see how it, how people reacted to it, you know, solicit honest feedback. And we put our hearts and souls into it, which is not to say that criticism isn't warranted. I'm sure it is. I'm sure there's a thousand ways the course could be better, but I can't believe we've actually completed a project. Wow. And and the, the interesting part is that it's not a video course, right? It's uh, a PGN files. Yeah. So they're PGN files. The, obviously, the course is designed for not necessarily for high rated people, but definitely for people who are willing to invest, you know, serious work and effort. Mm -hmm. The way that we wanted to compensate for the lack of video is, first of all, you know, in, in the quality of the ideas uh, and the moves themselves. And 
Secondly, in the amount of textual annotations that are in the PGN files, we basically stro strove to explain every critical move uh, with ample text. Uh, we weren't entirely like there are moments now that I look at the course where I'm like, man, I really should have had a, an explanation here, an explanation there. But by and large, like all of the critical moments are explained and hopefully people will read them in like my voice and that'll take the place of video. Yeah, and and you know maybe this serves as uh, some kind of an intro. Uh, you know, you showing it on the video, and then people can check it out there. You know, myself, I have never ever played this. I'm a d4 player, but I never mm -hmm. like to put my knight on c3 with my pawn on c2. You know, I always like uh -huh. to put my pawn forward. And so today, I'm very excited to actually see if you know this is something that I can learn something from and maybe try it out in my games whenever I do. So it's some kind of an intro or just uh, letting people know how, how to play this opening would be great fun. I think it'll be awesome. Um, more than happy to, to give you the ropes. And I, you know, I'm a, when apostle when it comes to this opening, I want to convert as many people <laughs> as possible to the Jabava. Uh, because I think it's good from so many different perspectives. It's super challenging. It's still very, very fresh at any level under GM. I mean, realistically, mm -hmm. most of the GMs that I play now, they know I play it, so they've they're booked to the teeth. But at an intermediate level, you know, anywhere from like let's say a thousand to twenty four hundred, I think this is as challenging of an opening as one e four. I think that's what people don't realize about this opening it's 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 not you know a second rate dodgy gambit it's an opening based on thorough and sound positional principles but that also contains just scintillating tactical complications at every turn so you know i really think people should people who think of it as some sort of gimmick you know really should give it a chance and should take a look at the resulting positions before making a judgment yeah, yeah, I know that it's very powerful because I've seen Arjun Arigaisi play it uh, and he's beaten some of the best players in the world with yep. it. Uh, so so that that really convinced me when he was getting these wins. I think he's beaten Anish with it. He's beaten some mm -hmm. very strong players. Uh, so, so shall we get started? Let's do it. And we owe a lot to Arjun. He, he developed so many of the cool ideas in this line. Ah, really? Okay. Fantastic. So, so the game starts off with d4, and mm -hmm. uh, does this work against knight f6 and d5 both? Yes, both knight f6 and d5. So the course centers on knight f6, knight c3, d5, but we also look at d4, d5, knight c3, bishop f5, which is super popular at a high level, and we, I think, we're able to pose very serious problems to this move. White responds with f3. Mm -hmm. Um, and this aims to transition the game into like a fantasy variation Karokan type of structure. And here already there are some very cool lines. So for example, if black plays knight f6, which is most popular online, now you play g4. This is one of the Ooh. fundamental ideas of the Jababa. When you play the move f3, you're preparing both e4, but this rapid kingside attack with g4 mm. turns out to be incredibly effective. We'll see this again uh, in more conventional forms. But here after bishop g6, you go g5. And if black goes to d7, then d5 hangs. So knight h5 is essentially forced, knight. although, yeah, knight, knight h5. And now suddenly you would think that white plays e4, and white does. Yeah. Black takes on e4, and you would think you automatically play f takes e4, but no, the move is f4. What? And already oh, black is in very serious trouble, as well as bishop e2. Okay. As well as bishop e2. So black can only save the knight with one computer move, which is e7, e5. But here, after f takes e5, white basically has a massive initiative, a good center. Bishop e2 is coming, and uh, black is in very serious trouble. The line goes to, to move 17, but just a little sneak preview. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. So so this already shows how unconventional this system is. Yeah, You can play g4, g5, and just... It's totally different. And get away with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And get away with it. And 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 that's what I love about it, which is that it, it's the the goal of the course isn't just to help people play this opening, but really to introduce people to new ideas and new ways of thinking about certain positions. So my hope is that it'll actually improve people's understanding of, you know, complicated dynamic positions. Right. Okay. 
So let's let's go to the initial position and uh, as you mm -hmm. said d4 knight f6 knight c3 d5 and yep. then bishop f4. Uh, what what is the most common move here because you know black can go e6 g6 yeah. I guess these two are the main moves right? So online we mainly use the Lee Chess database uh, to test moves for popularity online. Online the most popular move uh, is e6. Okay. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's the most popular move by quite a bit. Yeah. So so looking at the Lee Chess database, e6 million six hundred forty seven thousand. The second most popular move, ah. and this is the the calling card, is knight to c6. Really? Which oh. basically loses the game. What? It loses the together with knight bd6. Well, I mean, I mean it, look, it looks it looks really bad. It looks really bad, but uh... <laughs> slight exaggeration. <laughs> knight b5, and black simply cannot defend c7. And of course, the only move is e5. Otherwise, it's you know disaster of epic proportions. Right. And now you simply play d takes e5. And now 170,000 games continue knight e4. And of course, here. You know, with great pleasure, we deliver the move. Queen takes d5. Ah. And, you know, bad, bad becomes worse, and you end up three pawns up. <laughs> wow. And then... So... That's yeah, game over. And the, the rest is history. But even if black plays the relatively better knight h5, I mean, it's it's total misery. So instead of knight e4, uh, knight h5, white plays e3. Very accurate move. Setting up a nice pawn phalanx in the center. Knight f4, ef. Mm. And the development's very easy, like knight f3, knight bd4, bishop d3, and I mean, it's just a disaster for black here. Right. Okay. Uh, so that's the second most popular move. The most popular is e6, and then the third is bishop f5, and those three are like by far the most popular moves online. Okay. And and uh, so so shall we look at e6? Let's start with e6, because that's one of the more exciting lines. Here, we, do, we recommend knight to b5. Right. And so you are, you're just playing your knight here, attacking this. But black can just defend it in, I guess, two ways. Maybe knight a6 and bishop d6. And there's a third line that's popular at the top, which is bishop b4, c3, bishop a5. Uh -huh. Obviously, like, not popular online at all. In fact, C C six is more popular online than Bishop B four check. Uh, C six we did not analyze in the course. I hope people will forgive us. <laughs> um, now, Knight B five is a very positional move. People can misinterpret it as an anti pre move mm. type of move. The idea is very simple. If Black plays Knight A six, then the Knight from A six will have a very hard time rejoining society, because okay, let's say Black plays Knight A six, even though Bishop D six is more popular. Um, White plays e3, yeah. and at first sight, knight b5 seems like a waste of time. e3, black plays c6, and like, why did we initiate this whole thing? But after knight c3, black experiences ma monumental problems with uh, the knight on a6. So a lot of people, they end up going like knight to c7. And here is a line that illustrates really the power of white setup. White develops normally, knight f3. Bishop d6. And... Maybe? Yeah, bishop d6 is one of the moves. We looked at the others, bishop for knight e5. Ah, so, and d6. this construction is super, super common with the knight sitting between the two bishops like this. Castles. And bishop d3. The bishop in the Jabava almost always comes to d3. Okay. Now, very common blunder in general is to play knight f6 to d7. People have an instinct to want to trade the knight. This fails. The knight takes f7. Oof. And white wins a pawn with interest. There's tons of these tactical blows all across this opening. And this is attacked, this is attacked, and if you take here, then this hangs. Okay, brilliant. Right. So, if we go back to the moment after bishop d3 before knight d7, um, the best way for black to try to fight uh, white's construction is c5, and this is what a lot of people default to. So bishop d3, c5. Mm -hmm. In this version, we can actually take on c5, and in comes the second main attacking idea. The first being to put the knight on e5. The second being the transfer of the queen to h3. So we play simply queen f3. And this is the fun part. We just go after black. Bishop d6, for example. And queen h3. Everything is defended. And this just gets nasty really, really quickly. g6, g4. I mean, you just like, you just tear black apart. Then the idea is queen g3. 
okay. H4, H5, and mate. <laughs> And try stopping it. <laughs> try and, stopping and you it. could also long castle if you if you need. Oh yeah, and, oh yeah. And the thing is, the knight on c7 doesn't contribute to anything. If it were on c6, black's position would have been quite okay. Completely because... fine, and that's the main idea of knight to b5. Mm. So okay, so I'm I'm kind Sorry, of I interrupted you. Mm -hmm. no, I kind of get it. Uh, yeah. So g4, and by the way, this is completely better for white yeah this is better objectively and the line in the course uh goes on so like knight c e8 is a very common move and then queen g3 then you castle and play h4 but i think people you know understand the point in this position right um so so, so that's the idea of knight b5 yeah so knight b5 knight a6 uh e3 c6 mm -hmm. you go back uh, let's say I just keep my knight on a6. I'm not afraid of bishop mm -hmm. takes a6. I, I, I just trade with bishop uh, d6 because so now you don't line. have knight e5, right? So now you don't have knight e5, but now you switch to positional. You switch gears. You play bishop takes a6. Okay. And Bortnik and I were initially against recommending this because we both learned the Jababa on our own without the engine. And using the engine was an eye-opening experience because we came with our own ideas. And in many ways, our minds were actually shifted mm. in certain positions. One of them was we were very skeptical. Ah, Bishop A6 giving up the light skirt. Bishop. But then we started checking this position and found it's miserable for black. Knight F3. So B A6. If Bishop takes F4, there's Bishop takes B7. Intermezzo and white wins a pawn. Right. Another little tricky trick. So B takes A6. You play Knight F3. Ah, oh, you play, and and you're okay with the uh, black taking here and more than okay, yeah. Because the dark squares are terribly. In fact, after black castles here, our line in the course is straight away knight a4. Oh, nice. And and you're just you're just sinking your teeth into these squares. Knight e4, yeah. If queen a5, c3 is very important. And mm. even if black plays knight e4, that's nice, not dangerous. You castle. Now we want to play knight d2 and get a bad, horrible bishop versus good knight situation. But alternatively, if black plays queen d6, we'd like to avoid the weakening of the king side with g3. So here the pawn is nicely defended by knight e5, and you kill two birds with one stone. F6, ah, and, and knight, no, d3, knight d3, and everything works perfectly. F3 is threatened, knight ac5 is coming, black is in huge trouble here. It's plus over minus. Wow. Amazing. Uh, so... After knight f3, if I could just show one more line there. Um, if we rewind after bishop takes a6, ba. Yeah. Uh, knight f3, c5 is one way that black can try to free up uh, some of the weak squares. Here we play bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. And again, we insist on our concept, knight to a4 anyway. Okay. Again, going for the dark squares on the queen side, c, d, e, d. And then we looked at knight e4. We are never scared of queen b4 because of c3. Now again, knight e5. Yeah, queen b4, c3. If everything is defended, knight e4. Again, we play knight e5. Hmm. And here the idea is even more straightforward. We want to play f3 and chase away the bishop. And a position that illustrates how miserable things become is like castles, f3. And after knight f6, knight c5, we are just positionally dominating. The, the main thing and, here is that the bishop on, on c8 is is very bad, yes? And the pawn structure on the queen side is like mm. a permanent source of problems for black. And this is easy to play in a blitz game, too. You can play castle c3. Like, in a lot of these positions, I think people will find that it's just intuitive to, to continue improving your position. Whereas for black, you know, black has to be a lot more creative um, and, and tactically alert to, to figure out ways to stay afloat. Mm. Got it. Okay, so this is very interesting. I mean, the most natural move, which is e6, is suddenly running into knight b5. And as you said, uh, knight a6, that kind of covers it, yeah? Uh, knight a6. Yeah, that's the basics of knight. I mean, there's, you know, the course has a ton of lines. Like, every line, you know, there are positions where we look at seven or eight options. Right. Um, we wanted to give even the pickiest consumer of courses, like, you know, something to be satisfied. A bishop d6, though, is the most popular move online. So this is what people will actually face. And after bishop d6, black is simply worse because yeah, white, of course, takes with, with the, knight. the knight. Yeah. And you play e3, and this is just such a nice position for white. 
Right. Um, and this is one way our course like deviates from Hans's chessable course. I'm absolutely not trying to, you know, compare. I think Hans did a tremendous job, mm. but there are, there are positions where online they occur very, very frequently, but sometimes only one option is considered. So we tried to focus on the positions which actually are reached the most commonly online, including this one, which we analyze in a lot of detail. So we look at knight c6, knight f3, and white adopts kind of a London setup here. White plays pawn to c3, bishop e2, h3. You make all the typical London system moves. Mm. And the key point that we made is that even if black prepares e5, that's not scary because the d4 pawn is so well protected. Right. So... And and Black you and just castle and, yeah. claim that uh -huh. you have the bishop pair and and you are you're slightly better here. As well. Yeah, I would say I would say very very clear edge castle c3 is our line. And then one of the lines we look at is rook e8 which I think is what I would probably play. h3 and e5. And here we make a note that this move is the opposite of scary because we can just bring our bishop back to h2. Mm -hmm. And let's say Black continues developing bishop f5. Bishop b2, rook c8 is the line that we gave as a sample castles. And you just have a lot of ways with white to improve her position. Queen is coming to b3. Yeah. The rooks are coming to f to e1 and a either to d1 or to c1. And you basically await the perfect opportunity to open up the center with de followed by c3, c4. And if black plays e4, then that opens up the dark squared bishop. e4, knight drops back to d2. And then just like in the advanced French with colors reverse, we will try to push C4 and ultimately get to the D6 pawn. Wow. Okay, this is very interesting. And I think uh, this Bishop D6 definitely um, for for someone who is, uh, you know, experienced would, would definitely think that white doesn't have to worry, right? Because after Knight D6, CD6, you can, as you just showed, just make natural moves and you are, you're doing very well. And this is like uh, something, a big, huge appeal of the Jababa, which is that colloquially, like people always go into these lines where white is just better for the rest of the game. Right. So, but we still look at this in a lot of detail, the bishop d6 line. There's also bishop b4 check, which is the craziest of the three. Okay. And I play c3. Yeah, c3, bishop a5. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to feel like a boss when you play these moves. Um, sounds like a title of some gimmicky article. Play these moves and feel like a boss. A4. Okay. So the point, of course, is to play B4 and A5. Hmm. That much is clear. Black plays A6. This is essentially forced. A6. Um, otherwise, white plays B4 and traps so, the bishop. So if... Yeah, I can't go C6 because there is knight D6 knight check. Knight D6, yeah. And so A6, okay, and... Uh... And now B4. Okay. And now we look at five moves. What five moves? Okay. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this is, but we'll uh, I'll spare you most of them. So here's I'm listing the moves: Bishop b6, Bishop takes b4, Knight c6, Knight h5, and a takes b5. Sorry, Bishop b6, Bishop b4, <laughs> a takes b5, Knight. Knight h5 and and Knight c6. What I mean, Knight. Okay, knight c6 also makes sense. Yeah. Knight, but so so the point is we want this course to be for GMs, but we also want it to be for club players. So we look at all the top moves and all the moves that are played online. So A B, of course, is yeah. far and away the most popular move. We respond with A B. Oh, of course, we don't oh, rush to take. take the bishop. Okay. And I won a game here very recently against Christopher You actually, because already this position is very difficult for black. Here we also look at five moves. It's important to point out that bishop takes b4. Um, doesn't work because rook a8, bishop c3, you have bishop d2. Mm, okay. And black's initiative evaporates. Um, what move appeal occurs to you when you think of this for black? Like what, mm. what does your intuition say? Well, firstly, I, I, I mean, I can't move the bishop. I want to take back, I want to win back the pawn on a5, mm -hmm. but... How do I do it when you take BA5? If I play C6, my B8 knight would hang at the end. Uh, I mean, it opens right. up. So, um, it doesn't look like... I mean, there's something else. Like B6 maybe could be one idea. Bishop B6 is D7. a move. Bishop D Bishop D7 is the, our main line, actually. Because, because it, it counterattacks attacks the pawn. Yeah. Now, we play E3. We still don't rush to take the bishop. 
And here, um, Black has, okay, we want to play B takes A5 and emerge with an extra pawn. The most exciting line is Bishop takes B4 now. Now, now the Bishop can come back to D2 because the pawn is on E3. And this is one of the few lines in the course where, where it is a very bold line. And we say that you basically, this is one of the lines you, you really have to memorize. Rook takes A8. Oh, you, you take cool. here. You no, do. I'm, not not CB4. No, you take the plunge and play Rook takes uh, A8. Because, you, know, you know, I've kept my live database open. So I see uh -huh. some games happened before and everyone's taken CB4. So I think Rook A8 is never played in an on... I mean, maybe online, but never played in over-the-board chess. And we try to give as many novelties as possible. Okay. It's hard sometimes to say what is a novelty, what isn't because of the Blitz games. But Rook A8 is one of those moves. Bishop C3, King E2. Okay, Bishop this B5, looks King super F3. Super scary. King F3. It is. <laughs> so the problem for Black is that his attack runs out of gas. Bishop takes F1 is forced because the bishop hangs. Okay. Queen takes F1. Mm -hmm. And if knight E4, which I thought is a very human move, then Queen B5 check Black and resign. The king on f3 is quite safe, actually, because b7 is lost, and that's it. Right, um, right. Okay, but so, instead of knight e4, uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't even look easy to attack because you can't get your knight on b8 out. It's pinned. Right. And uh, you can't get your queen in somehow to attack. And with the bishop, what, what can you do? Yeah, like, so it's not so easy to even launch an attack here. Oh. Yeah, it's one of those things when you start looking at it in more detail. It's like, oh, it's not... That's scary. Right. Black has to castle here. That's really the only logical move. And now we still play queen b5. The point is to make it very difficult for black to untangle his pieces. Hmm. Um, and we attack b7. And after b6, we create a luft square for our king. It's time to play g3. And this is the step, first step of consolidation. King g2. We can play h4 to stop the move g5 if necessary. And then we go knight e2, and black, I mean, from a practical perspective, I think black is close to lost here. Right, right. I mean, if you can't make threats, then white is just beautifully coordinated, and there's no way to claim compensation. Right. Yeah, right. so this this is very interesting, uh, uh, that you can actually take on a8, put your king on f3, and uh, yeah. And the jabab is, like, full of, of lines like this, where... It's just like the, the types of tactics are, are ones that we haven't seen like in any other mm. opening. It's very unique. The types of positions are very unique. Okay, so instead of bishop d7... Okay, if you play b6, then I think you can just take on a5 and... Get ba, the, ba, yeah. and e3. Yeah, that's... And white gets basically bishop pair, and then you do the same thing. Like bishop d3, knight f3, knight e5. Right. And white is clearly better there. Okay. Um... There is also, yeah, if c6, if c6, then we actually still play e3. Mm -hmm. So the main rule is not to rush with b takes a5. Bishop d7, exclamation, that's actually the best move. And now we found b6. So you give up the pawn in order to garner tempi, in order to be able to take the black bishop with tempo. Okay. And after queen b takes b6, b8. Ah, you can't Black is in rook. huge trouble on the dark squares. Yeah, here you play bishop b8. And if queen b2, which we thought was very likely, then there is a beautiful queen trap line. Let, let's, let's, uh, okay. At, so at some the, point, first we, can ask, we can ask our viewers here. So after can. castles, after castles, short, let's see who can find the, the, okay. the idea, the, the winning maneuver. Okay, guys, uh, try to figure out, I think, I got it, but it's okay, let's cool. ask our viewers, uh, what should white play here? White to play. Mm -hmm. I'll be back in two seconds. I'm just yeah. The just give me one second. I'll be oh, right back. Mr. Dumb, what a move. I didn't think about it. Eric, uh, I think your move, Vedant, uh, the move that you guys are mentioning, Persevere, Carlos, this is what I, I also thought. Uh, yeah. So, so bishop, bishop d6. Yes, bishop d6. There was one uh, idea of e4, but I don't think it works. e4 with the idea of bishop, bishop c1 because a1 hangs at the end. So you can't trap ah, the queen that way. But it's the right idea. Bishop d6 is different. 
You go from you know, flying this through a different airport. Yeah. Rook e8, uh, bishop a3, queen b5, and now the second step. What to do now? Okay. Now. Because the queen gets out. There is some discovered attack that we need to. But that's. Guys, what do you do here? <laughs> now it's it's just a pretty straightforward. Yeah, you can move the knight anywhere, yeah? You can move the. Yeah, knight f4 is best, but the basic idea is bishop b2. After queen takes a5. Ah, knight. Oh, knight f4. Sh oh, we have Srinath Narayanan in the chat. Srinath. Oh, uh, wow. The, maybe Srinath is the guy who also has made a lot of contributions because he's the trainer of Arjun. So, you know, he, he oh. would be. <laughs> so, Dude, they worked I, on I this. I will open. point out, when we look at the G6 line, if we get to it, I'll point out a, a, an idea that Arjun came up with. Like, Arjun... Basically, in any position, Arjun will play h4. H4, h5, right. And, and Bordick, so Bordick and I look, like, Arjun played h4. This move can't possibly work. <laughs> and then, like, two hours later, it's amazing. Like, this is this move revitalizes the line. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember there was this h4, h5, and then he played bishop h6 somewhere. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's the game we are going to look at. But I was that was my yeah. sort of initiation into thinking that, okay, this is... This is an impressive opening, you know, uh, the way Arjun played it. Okay. Yeah, there's one position I'm um, particularly, uh, you know, where, where you just play h4 out of nowhere, but we'll get to it. So yeah, bishop b2, and just to con con conclude this particular uh, thought, black is black loses the rook on a8. Right. So by the way, the one of the versions of h4 where Arjun, uh, where, where we see h4 in an unlikely scenario, we can maybe... Check this line and then move on from e6, if if you want. Yeah, sure. If we go back, uh, sorry to, to jump around, back to the knight a6 variation, I'll just show this instance of the move, and, and that's it. Knight b5, knight a6. Okay. So our main line is e3, and then not c6, but bishop e7. This is how most GMs play it. Bishop ah, e7. Because, because there's no point in pushing the knight yes. back and then allowing bishop takes a6 in some lines, right? It's counterproductive, exactly. Right. So bishop e7 is what most GMs do, knight f3. Okay. Castles, and now Arjun, you know, anytime I mention his name, you know what the move is. H4, yeah? H4, yeah, really? and we think it's the best move. Oh, and, and he's he's played it against uh, Karuana, Wesley, and many strong Everybody. Players. Yilmaz, he doesn't care. Marty he plays Rosia. against everybody and beats them. <laughs> <laughs> and he's beaten all of them in this line. Mm. Uh, so and the, the idea, idea is, is actually h5. Okay. And then g4. <laughs> then you want to mate black on the king's side. So one example oh. where you might be looking at this and say, what, where? Like, let's say black plays c6. This is the main line. Right. Let's go Knight back. c3, c5, h5. Idea if is black H6. does not, idea is h6 and the dark squares are are horrible. So black has to play h6. We look at the alternative, g4. Wow. So if black doesn't take, we analyze that. <laughs> but let's look at knight takes g4 because that's bless you. That's uh the kind of meat on the bone is there. Rook g1, f5, and we need to clear the g file. And this is line is a great illustration of how. Tactics and positional understanding combined in the Jababa. So you would think that this is like a checkmating line, but you switch to positional play. Knight e5. Okay, I trade, right? You have to trade. Yeah, bishop f6 is forced after bishop e5. And now bishop takes f6, queen f6, and suddenly you go for the dark squares. Bishop takes a6, <laughs> our old friend. BA, B B A6 and, and DC. Yeah? Ah, okay, not yet. Okay, so DC. even simpler, DC and queen d4. And we just have total control. The knight from c3 often goes to e2 and f4 and g6. So wow. we believe that this is, or even d3 and e5. This is a common maneuver here as well. White is better. Amazing. So one example of h4 being played. Wow. So, okay. So here uh, in the line where actually this is kind of the main line of knight a6. This idea yes. with h4, uh, which Arjun plays, it could be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is what we tried to do throughout the course, is just as many new fresh ideas as humanly possible. And, and, and do you give one recommendation for white, or do you give several? 
So in most cases, we give one. There are mm. a couple of exceptions when we believe that the line contains a very interesting trap. Uh, and and we can use that as, uh, to transition maybe to the uh, C5 line, 3C5 line, because that's one of the lines where we give two possibilities. But I don't know. I don't I don't want to, like, dictate what we do. Whatever you, whatever you feel like looking at, I'm good with. Okay. So, so Bishop F4... Uh... Okay, I'm very interested. Just uh, we mm -hmm. we are looking at e6, uh, and I think we've kind of looked at it. But just this move c5, does that make yeah. sense, or it it just yeah? This this was supposed to bust the Jabava line. Like for a while, this was like the refutation because everybody was playing e3. Mm. And if I play c3, then it's toothless. C d e d, and then even Bishop g4 is just. I looked at this briefly. There is this is just. Nothing. It's just lifeless. It's like you played the Karokan with knight on c3 yeah. and it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So right. a couple of years ago, e4, which is a move that Bortnik kind of pioneered, he was basically the first to start playing this, uh, came along. And I think our proudest work in the course came in this line because I think we really, really managed to pose very serious problems to black in this, in a line that's supposed to be like the refutation, basically. Okay, so firstly, there are three captures here, D, E, Knight, E, and C, D, 4. Um, yep. Let, let's say if I take uh, Knight, E, 4, let's just start, should I uh, maybe... Yeah, that's in? the main line, Knight, E, 4, Okay, D, so e, then, then maybe we can first look at D instead of Knight, E, 4. Yes, so D, E, you play D, C. Ah, D, C. Yeah, and online, most people take on D, 1, that's already a mistake, and the end game is very bad for black. Because white threatens knight b5. Mm -hmm. And if black stops that with a6, then the knight transitions to a4. And go to b6. And, yeah, and black can play knight bd7, white plays b4. And you get the situation where black is just super, super cramped. Mm. Um, like e6, you play a3. And white just has easy development here. White can play this with f3, or white can play knight g1 to e2 to c3. And the pawn on e4 is a very serious long-term weakness. I mean, black can't move here if you look at black's pieces. Isn't, oh, basically, if you play a5, there's bishop b5, yeah? Bishop b5, yeah, important ah, detail. Right, right. Okay, brilliant. So And knight d5, bishop d2, yeah. Here, if... Any any time basically any time knight five yeah I guess here it doesn't doesn't work sorry actually. here are the knight hangs yeah sorry no that's my bad yeah you, that's why you play a three actually right okay um so can't take uh d I mean d d c seems like fine for uh, white so yeah there's queen a five also but but we don't have to go into that right but if he takes c d here. Mm -hmm. Then I then guess queen you D4. take queen d4, knight c6, then I guess... Yep, bishop b5. Bishop b5. And I've won a couple games like this against Iams and James. Bishop d7 is... Now, here's one of the moments where we give a second recommendation. Instead of bishop b5, there's an ultra-rare move. This is almost never played, and it's unbelievably dangerous for black. Queen to a4. Okay. So objectively, when you turn on the engine, it gives minus plus. But that's the thing... That's where we try to do the additional work. If you actually try to play this with black, it's very easy to lose this really quickly. Bortnik has beaten Geary here. Yeah, I, He's I can see. He's beaten a bunch of good players. B Bortnik has all, all Bortnik games: Van Forest, Nizmish, yep. uh, Matlako, Paravian. I mean, he's played it against everyone. People don't know what to do here. So d4, I think, is the is the like very tempting move. And the point is, you go knight b5. Uh, threatening and you threaten knight c7. So black plays e5. Like, yeah. What's the big deal? Yeah. Bishop takes e5. Oh, nice. And if, and if I knight, take yeah. knight e5? Knight c7, king e7, knight takes a8, and already white is winning. Because if black plays bishop to d7 mm -hmm. to try to win the knight, then you play queen takes pawn. And uh, queen takes d4, actually. Sorry. Uh -huh. I didn't realize there was a second pawn you could take. <laughs> I don't know if queen that's a bad d4. move. But okay, queen here. And... So knight c6, and you give up the knight on the corner. But black's king is busted. Queen d2, simply. Mm. And ca queen takes a8, castles queen side. And have fun, as they say. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is this is gone. You know, f4, e4, e5 would come, and white looks really... Yeah, e5 you know. immediately also is a threat, I think. Right. Because knight e5 or e1, yeah, queen d6. That's it's just dead winning. 
Okay, so, so black has to find like a series of computer moves there. Right. So um, knight so that's, c6, uh -huh. bishop b5 is uh, queen a4 is very dangerous, but bishop b5 is also quite good. Our main recommendation, yeah, bishop d7. And the idea is one and the same. Bishop takes c6. Black, if black takes to the pawn, he loses d5. So bishop takes c6. Yeah, here white simply no compensation. So bishop c6, e5. And this line would fail entirely if after knight d7, you gave black one more tempo to play e6. And of mm. course, white plays e6. That's the crux of the line. And oh, after F E can, can we take on D five or that's just I think it's So I think Black is supposed to play E six here and Black gets a big initiative because of the G two pawn. Hmm. Knight E three, Bishop C five, I think, and Bishop takes E three is a problem. Ah, okay. And this is um, an issue. Right. Okay, so instead yeah. of that we can just sack a pawn here. Traditional typical positional idea, F E and Knight F three establishing control over the E five square. Yeah, this looks and queen, cool. queen b6, queen d2, and you know our analysis goes on and on and on, but this is just a very very difficult position for black. Got it. Okay, so this one looks great. So we come to I think the main move, which is to take on e4 with the knight. With the knight, so knight takes e4, d e d c. So of course the black equalizes in this line with best play, and we don't sugarcoat this and I, I hate it when like books and courses pretend like oh here's you know one a3 and it refutes chess like it's better <laughs> in every line so we are honest when a line is equal right. uh but still qu queen a5 check is by far the most popular the end game is slightly worse for black so if i take on um, d1 and and yeah, the, the reason i i say this is because i think prague has played this against botnik once i uh -huh. see it pragnananda and uh, so what what did Prague play here? He played knight c6. And did Sasha play bishop e3? He played bishop b5. Aha. Uh -huh. So our recommendation in the course is bishop e3. Uh-huh. It's and, just and a prophylactic if, move. If someone mm -hmm. plays such a position, because this can come from many different lines, right? You have like four pawns here, uh, like two extra pawns, and why black yep. has two extra pawns on the king side. So is the idea to just start pushing your queenside pawns, like with white? So that is going to be ultimately the idea to to go c three and b four, right? And b five. That's and the pawn mass is incredibly mobile. Hmm. The there's two other factors. The bishop on f eight has a hard time getting out because of the pawn on c five, which is well defended. And then the third idea is after black plays e five, it's crucial to gain active prospects for the knight on g one. So we play f three. The traditional uh, way of playing this line is to play knight g1 to e2 to c3. Right, we believe that's right. too slow. So we recommend f3. Oh. Directly going for active development. EF knight f3. And uh, after bishop f5, c3. And there we go. And we are basically ready to play b4. We are ready to deploy the bishop to c4. And black is having a lot of hard troubles defending everything. Right. Okay, got it. So, uh, taking on d1 is not the best. Uh, queen a5 check. C3. Yeah. yeah, that's the main line. Queen, queen c5, queen a4. And this was Hans Niemann's famous blitz game from the World Blitz Championship. Ah, this uh, one. The, the one where he blundered yeah. the pawn on c3. <laughs> yep. Ah, so, knight okay. c6. Although we also analyzed bishop d7, which is a rare move. But knight c6, queen e4. And now all the GMs, they play g6. Um, this is the trap line, knight f3 and bishop g7. And this is where Hans played, you know, bishop e2. Right. Now, I believe that the standard move is queen e3. Instead of bishop e2. Yeah. Yeah. But the move that we recommend, we looked at queen e3, we thought it was equal. And this is, you know, one of our, like, proudest moments. We came up with the move rook d1. Uh -huh. And this leads to some fascinating complications, which I think... This position is just so much easier to play for whites. Here's the point. Again, uh, again five Bortnik games out of six. Yeah. <laughs> so he practices what he preaches. Yeah, he, he's just everywhere. So so there are a few names that I see. Uh, like there is mm -hmm. Bortnik, there is uh, Arjun, as you said. There's you. And also there is uh, Madam Minov. There's this player from uh, uh, yeah. Uzbekistan who played very well at World Blitz. And I think he's played a lot of games as well. 
he started uh i see everybody in the chat wants a kasparov impression i'll throw one in at some point <laughs> uh i'll throw one in at some point uh but but yeah it might have mean i've started playing this line recently too mm. so i think some people are discovering that it's like you know relatively unexplored territory nice. um so here after black castles uh you start by playing bishop e3 so mm. you chase the queen to a5 and then the other bishop comes out to c4 black typically plays bishop f5 to attack the queen and the queen swings over to h4 and we believe that this is a very unpleasant position for black mm -hmm. for several reasons both positional and tactical and the lines here are really really exciting particularly bishop f6 in this position leads to some incredible ideas okay here white to play knight g5 threatening a mate in one so h5 and yeah. now maybe the chat can figure out after h5 there's a very pretty looking okay. move very nice guys what should with, white with an play? even prettier idea i mean the first move that comes to my mind is that but but how do you yeah it's I, probably the correct move <laughs> but 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 i can't make it work so easily ah got it you just okay let's see yes sports with tanish you are i think you are right but eric so wants to no go it's to... actually not that no 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 because uh -huh. the problem is if you go f3 it's just we think i think it's too slow no no f3, like f3 is eric, can... eric's move but g4 ah. is what but g4 bishop takes g4 what's the idea I thought then rook d5, but yeah, now I see uh, directly rook d5 and then take directly on f5. Rook d5. Makes exactly rook d5, and black has a drawing move here. That's a, that's black has a drawing sequence that's so computerish, it's insane. It starts with bishop takes c3 check. But how does um, Mihir, and that's just the tip of the iceberg? Mihir Shah in the chat, no, he says rook d5 and then this crazy line with bishop c3. Ha yeah, there is wow. a crazy line of the ship C3. Okay, maybe he bought the course. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, maybe. Or or have yeah, you bishops... have you showed this uh before uh in, in your No, no, never. Ah, Not okay. in stream. Okay. Not in stream. So bishop C3 so, take. Maybe? Yeah, BC, Queen C3, Bishop D2. Mm -hmm. But this is all forcing Queen A1, King E2. Uh Queen A1, King E2. Queen H1. And now the whole point of rook d5, which is to take on f5. Yeah. So there are some amazing lines after g takes f5. The drawing move, the only move is rook a d8 instead. Instead of taking the, the only rook. Move. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, who's going to find all this? But I want to show some lines after gf that are amazing. Okay, it looks So gf, queen, queen h5. h5. Yeah, it looks... Knight d4. Black starts checking. Uh -huh. Black starts checking. But King, King e3. King d3, queen f... So, king d3, I think there is queen b1, b1. I'm pretty sure. Ah, queen b1, okay. And so then it... the queen surrounds so the So, let's king. go to e3 because there are no checks by the black queen. f4, black has... Because knight c2, the king escapes through f4. So, f4 is forced. Um, here, the king escapes in a variety of different ways, obviously. So, f4, king takes d4, uh -huh. and queen a1. Sorry, and rook a d8. Yeah. King e5? Uh, what? No. King e5. Really? Yeah, king e5. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we're almost there. Queen a1. King f5. Uh, king f4. Actually, king, oh. king f4. Queen yeah. f6. King g4. And then the tactics continue. We're finally out of the checks because if rook d4 check, then f4. If queen g7, I mean, here it's easier. But here, if queen g7, bishop c3 again. Wow. Rook d4 check and f4 is the final move. More accurate than taking the rook. And white finally wins. Unbelievable. And the king uh, uh, feels like he's he's played a big role in this victory. Yeah? <laughs> he's and is on the safest square on the board. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. we hope that people will like enjoy. The These are the kinds of lines that we hope people will really appreciate in the course. And you know, um, when, uh, Dania, when such lines exist, it's not just that you are learning the opening, you are also kind of uh, tuning your calculation, your attacking skills, and so on. Right. And that's one of my biggest hopes, which is that people won't treat this like, okay, here's the moves I have to memorize. Oh, I see that there's a ton of lines. Oh, this is like not as well organized as chess. Like, I'm really hoping that this will stimulate people to really go deep into the positions and develop their, develop their thinking. Right. Which ultimately is like, where will you be if you don't develop your ability to think in, in the early middle game? Like learning the opening was useless if you don't have a grasp of the resulting middle games. Mm. Got it. Okay. So 
this was by the way just to remember this came out of the line c5 e4 knight e4 knight e4 dc and queen a5 and so on yeah this yeah this is a crazy line okay just for my curiosity and um, also uh-huh. i'm sure what about g6 because you know this looks like the most solid way to play as black right and this was our most problematic move and the one we probably spent the longest on so e3 bishop g7 and now we're possessed by the spirit of Arjun Aragaisi, so we play h4. h4, okay. Um, and as we clarify in the text, this is not just a bullet move. This is a very serious move. So black, if black wants to preserve equality... Okay, most people play h5 at the high level. Right. Oops. Yeah, and now uh, we go knight f3, castles, and we start with queen to d2, preparing to castle queen side so, so when what, necessary what is the main idea like generally uh i feel mm-hmm. like what's the knight doing on c3 because when you can't break with c4 uh your yeah. knight is just looking at this pawn which is anyway defended e4 is not so easy to engineer what is mm-hmm. white's main idea to go g f- to go for some attack or yeah so the knight on c3 is actually a defensive piece which mm-hmm. is what i think how you should look at this position. It's a defensive piece that's holding the queen side together. It's defending e4. It's discouraging black from playing c5. And it's buying us time that we can use to transition the attack to the king side. The idea is knight e5, f3, and g4, and h5. It's Uh as simple as that. So we're trying to go for mate, but we're also using some positional play on the queen side. So if black plays c5, then we play knight e5. Anyway, this is the main line. Almost every game, the high level goes like this. So here, black can play CD here on the next move. Let's say black plays knight CD here, ED. Uh, knight C6. And F3. Very important move. Controlling key squares, preparing G4. Mm-hmm. And after bishop F5, we came up with a very interesting idea, which is to play bishop F1 to B5. Right. And there's this is leading to a beautiful line that, I, that, I'll, that I'll show. We put pressure on the knight on C6. Mm-hmm. And if rook C8, an yeah. old friend... Makes... Pays us a visit. Bishop takes c6 and knight a4. Uh-huh. Nice. And again, we're dominating on both sides of the board. We can go knight c5 and then g4. Like, this is the best of all worlds. Right, right. Um. So so this rook and... c8... Uh, and, and this is always the problem, right? Like, if once the c5 square is weak, then the knight on c3 suddenly looks very well placed. Yeah, you look like a genius for putting it there. <laughs> <laughs> So, but the cool line is knight takes e5 instead of rook c8. Right. Um, there's also queen b6, which we looked at, but knight e5 is the sort of topical move. De. Yeah. Knight d7, and we castle queen side. Okay. So Take on e5, yeah. knight takes e5. Yeah. Rook h e1 intermezzo. Mm-hmm. Knight c6, and we don't take d5. We play bishop h6. We root out the bishop. Ah. Uh, and the beautiful good. line. So. I faced this against Paravian just tonight in Blitz. He played e5, and I forgot the moves, of course. You you played uh, with Paravian because Arjun played this with Paravian himself. Yeah, Paravian likes this line. Ah. But we believe that white is better here with best play. Now, there's bishop takes h6, which, is, which leads to the beautiful line. And black plays e6. And now a delightful idea. So I don't know if... Okay, let's. Yeah, let's I can ask say the first chat. move, maybe. Or let's ask chat. Okay, yeah. guys, what should uh, White play here? And by the I way, think Mihir, the move itself. Uh-huh. Uh, Mihir mentioned uh, that he got to know about that crazy line from Bortnik stream. He had once. Discussed oh, it. Yeah. nice, nice, nice. So Bortnik himself also, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some people are getting the move. I think by now they are like, okay, you, you just have to throw everything into the kitchen. Yeah, yeah like go G4, G4 is correct. <laughs> G4 is correct. But Great. the follow-up is beautiful. HG, and now not H5, but actually FG, Bishop G4, and Knight E4. And again, the Knight looks like a genius. Wow. Wow. And you're going to G5. Yeah. And it's unstoppable it- because... Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, is is this compensation enough? D E rook D eight and rook D eight, or not really? Here, uh, I think probably white is just better. I guess the move might be rook G one. Uh-huh. 
Uh, I think black might be losing uh, you, to h5. You, you just can't put your bishop here because queen h5, so... Right. Or maybe bishop c6 first and then rook g1 is mm. more accurate. And then h5. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So g4, actually g4, hg. Uh, Arjun had played h5, but I think that is a mistake because of queen f6 somehow. And queen f6, defend yeah. That queen comes in. So taking here is correct. Uh-huh. Take in the 94 and knight g5, 96 and queen g6. So, yeah. So many lines like this. Um, black, of course, has a big, uh, has a lot of options in the position after h4. Yeah. So, like this line, yeah. Is playing h5 better or not? Like for black? Should black. Yeah, we think h5 is best. There's c6 also, which is a big move. But then we can go h5 or. Is it just so a... no, we go h5 if black goes a6. If black goes a6, then we go h5. Okay. Um, and that position is terrible for black. Terrible. Knight h5, rook h5 is just much, much better for white. But what's the difference? Like why? To... Ah, because you gain an extra because tempo. Because the pawn attack. on d5. Ah. And that tempo is absolutely crucial. Right. That tempo is crucial. So if black plays c6, mm -hmm. then... um. Then we play bishop e2. Threatening h5, yeah. Yeah, threatening h5. So black plays h5. Uh, knight f3. And again, it's the same type of position. Bishop g4, knight e5. Uh, bishop takes e2. Queen takes e2. And we just get a more pleasant position, we mm. think. Knight bd7, castles queenside. And the basic idea is as follows. Uh, constantly, there's the problem of white going g4. So if black goes knight e5, bishop e5, and castles, then we play very straightforward chess. Bishop takes f6 ah, and g4. Directly. We just take and go g4. And we looked at this position. So this, this is lost, right? Because, I mean, it feels lost practically because black has started nothing on the queen side while we've made such a big right. progress. Yeah. Exactly. So and even hg, you can play rook dg1, even more accurate, mm. to bring some cavalry in first. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, yeah. So, so I think the G6 line is probably the most solid of Black's options. And we were able, I think, to, you know, to pose some questions. Okay. Yeah. It, with it, this it, H4. And, and H4, if you go C5, which also, like, sort of tries to yeah. open up. Because the bishop on Knight G7 uh, wants that diagonal to be opened up. Okay, you go here. I have to go Knight A6. Yeah, this is almost always good for white c3. Mm -hmm. Castles, bishop e2. And the th important thing to remember, you do the same stuff. Knight f3, knight e5. But if black plays queen b6, you can always support the knight with a4. And white is just... Black is kind of paralyzed on the queen's side. Wow. Okay. Uh, so... Is this line yeah, so c so strong here, yeah, Daniel? Like, this, is, this seems so good. Well, here the thing is to remember is that I think like black basically we believe has three or four lines that equalize completely. Hmm. But the problem is just that very few people actually know that entire sequence. Like one of them is in the G6 line, black has some equalizing lines. In three C5, black has some equalizing lines and three bishop F5 for sure leads to, you know, equality if black is accurate. Okay, if he goes that bishop is f5 very dangerous. in general, mm -hmm. uh, what should we do? It looks like the ideas should revolve something around f3, g4 or, or not really here. That's what it used to be, but we recommend e3. And this is Neiman's recommendation as well. Okay. This is like the new move. e6. And it seems very innocuous. e6, knight f3. So here we looked at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 moves. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so. Okay, my question is Knight c6 doesn't look good, right? Oh, I mean, I'm just knight trying c6, to maintain Bishop d3. Symmetric. Oh, yeah. Bishop d3 and takes? Yeah, takes, takes, and this is the point made Which is that the, this extra tempo gives white Like, no, uh, cd, cd Ah, take with the pawn Yeah, cd, and that's an important idea To open up the pathway for the queen to b3 And we spent a lot of time like Exploring this pawn structure, like d3, d4, e3 which is actually a really nice pawn structure. I've always liked having this with white. Mm. So, for instance, bishop d6, yeah. queen b3, and you attack the pawn. So, rook b8 is like 
force they don't mind taking on f4 you have queen b7 or there's no queen b7 but uh you just play e takes f4 actually oh uh, this wait let me do actually let me double check this yeah because yeah, i think queen b7 there's knight a5 so that would lose material perhaps yeah if you after yeah because queen b5 c6 yeah yeah so you actually play no no queen b7 knight a5 i think there might be queen a6 uh and this is something we should have indicated <laughs> right so queen so, a6 and, so then queen b7 white. is possible yeah queen b7 is 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 much better for white uh, okay so so you can't take on f4 Rook B8. Yeah, then. so so Rook B8 and, and Bishop E5. I thought we thought was a very nice positional idea. And constantly White's extra tempo yields like a clear clear plus. If takes then D E and, and D4. If takes the knight D7 D4. Yeah, this looks. And then Rook C1. And I mean e, yeah. you can prepare. Yeah, in some positions E4, but you have to be careful about that move. Um, but White is quite a bit better. But if I and don't if touch, here, yeah, yeah, castles. Rook c1. And we just believe that white is sort of, white is a, a clear and stable plus. Mm. Um, because, okay, how is black going to play here? For example, if black plays knight d7, uh, then you can actually take, but you can also play bishop back to g3 and kind of keep the tension. Right. And then there's a easy plan with castles, rook f1, and e4. And mm. black has no like clear arrangement of pieces. Of course, this is like borderline equal, but I would take white like any day in this right. position, honestly. Right. Okay, so this looks um, pretty interesting. I mean, at least there's a good amount of juice to play uh, here, but not knight yeah. c6. There must be better moves here, like maybe uh, bishop b4 or something, bishop d6. Bishop b4 is really exciting because you play bishop d3. Okay. And here there's this line where black goes 94. And now it suddenly becomes very tactical. You castle. Ah, you gave up a pawn, yeah. And knight takes c3 loses, or comes very close to losing, actually. B2, believe it or not. Bc, bishop. Bishop C3. takes, rook b1. This this reminds of those, uh, some Vienna uh, systems, yeah, like uh, with DC, d4, knight f6, c4, d6, knight f3, d5. Knight c3, d4 so, lines. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is similar. Mm. So there's a 27 move line that ends in one of the most beautiful checkmates that we have came across in the course. I'll show <laughs> it very quickly. Okay. I'll show it very quickly. So b6. Yeah. Uh, bishop f5. E f5. Uh, queen d3. This is, of course, the point. Bishop a5. Queen f5. Castles. Now we start attacking. Knight g5. G6, queen h3, h5, g4, uh -huh. queen d7, Yeah. black has to force the queen, so gh, knight h, queen h3, knight h3, gh, king h1, opening up the rook's pathway, king h7, knight g5 check first, mm -hmm. king g6, now rook g1, we're almost there, king f5, because otherwise fork, knight h7 anyway, rook h8, rook g5 check, King e6. It's coming, it's coming. Rook e5 check. King d7. Uh -huh. Knight f6 check. King c6. And now, of course, you can take on d5. But c4 is beautiful because who can spot what happens after dc? Okay. Let me think. Uh, because the king is planning to run away to... Oh, my God. To, you, yeah, you'll see it quickly. Okay, but one second. Guys, what to do? <laughs> oh, that's the move. Brilliant. Yeah, it's it's just sick. And especially because, because, because Black has triple pawns. Because if you play rook a5, dc, uh, d, uh, sorry, ba, d5, there's king c5. Right. So you right, you exactly. need to take that square away with rook c5. Brilliant, yeah. guys. And if king b7 here, then rook takes a5. Yeah, you win a piece. <laughs> Yeah, all of this to win a piece. But, of course, BCD5 is just beautiful. Mate. Okay. Um, this, totally is realistic. this is totally <laughs> realistic. <laughs> but, okay, but this, this is so nice. So nice. Um, and, yeah, that's Bishop B4. Of course, there's Black is under no obligation to play Knight E4 there. 
Right. After bishop b4, bishop d3, black in play, bishop takes d3, for example. But then there's an awkward, again, cd. So anytime the bishop is on b4, we play cd because then later the move queen b3 is going to come with tempo. Mm. Got it. So like castles, castles, knight bd7, we play queen b3, and we're forcing black to take on c3, which is always good for white because you play bc and you get this massive like mobile pawn mass. Right. Where you can go like C4, A4, you know, lots of stuff. Yeah. Makes sense. And um, and instead of bishop B4, is bishop D6 more solid? Oh, but then I think 95, yeah? 95. Ah, yeah, and yeah. this is I'm one, learning. Of the, one of the selling points of, of, of the course, which is that if black castles here... G4. Um, then no? G, G4 already almost wins for white, like right. on the spot. right. Uh, because if bishop g6, then h4, you come across this idea very, very often in the Jabava where white threatens to trap the bishop with h5. And if black pushes the h pawn, then, uh, well, most of the time you take the bishop. But in this case, h6, you play g5. Hmm. Um, no, this looks very dangerous. Just the king side is opening up. But is g4, bishop, e5 any good? Because yeah. then I want to take D, d, knight, g4. Knight, f3. So um, not fearing the check on h4 because you have bishop g3, knight h6. Yeah. Right. Now h4 to grab some space and prevent queen h4 in the future. Knight c6. And we need to prepare long castles. So queen e2 with the idea of meeting d4 with long castles. Got it. Um, and the line continues. But basically, white even if he doesn't attack. do d four, then you just long castle and maybe get your rook to g one, and it looks risky, right? Uh, and e four is also a big idea for white right. in the center. E three, right. e four. So, okay. got it. Okay, this looks very interesting. There's one question which also someone in the chat asked, and this is somehow very different because d four, knight f six, knight c three. If someone yeah. goes g six with the idea of b they are king's Indian players. Then we right. don't go bishop f4 or we go e4? No, we go e4. So ah. here's what I have to say. We What we did not cover in the course are basically three main lines, which is d4, knight f6, knight c3, c5. We didn't cover g6 and we didn't cover e6. Now what I plan to do... Sorry, to uh, what, what didn't you cover? d4? C, c, c5. Ah, okay. So c5, d5, white is better, but I'll get to that in a moment. I'll, then g6, which is the perk, ah. and e6, which is like transposing into the French. So Very what I was much. planning to do is basically make complimentary YouTube videos mm. as part of my opening series and just basically cover these. And hopefully that'll give people a flavor of how I analyze and maybe that'll make more people buy the course. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, we didn't get to everything, but... Uh, so you know, so if you lines... are you're facing a King's Indian player, your recommendation is that don't go for Bishop F4 here, but go E4. E4, E4, D6, and the line that I will be recommending is is just the classical variation, like Knight F3 and Bishop E2. Oh, okay. I think this is. I'm not gonna say this busts the Pirates because I don't, you know, it's it's too categorical. But I think Black is just in trouble in the perk. Okay, that's what Karpov so, used to do. Yes. Yeah. Against the... It's old reliable. <laughs> right. Old reliable. Okay, so. Mainly this this uh, entire thing which uh, the course you have launched is revolving around d5 move mainly. Yes, yes. Mm. d5 move on move 2 or d5 on move 1 followed by bishop f5. Got it. Wow, I, I think we covered so much, so much here. Uh, so so essentially, uh, if if someone wants to get this course, I've put the link in the description. What do they uh -huh. do? Like they go there and then they, they, they make the payment and then they get a PGN file, yes? And then they can... They get uh, downloads uh -huh. and they, they, they can use the PGN. Like you can upload the PGN to chess.com, Lee Chess, Chessable, anything, literally, you can, a chess tempo. And then it's fully... And then the, the PGNs are divided by chapter and then there's one game that has everything together in case you want to make like a Chessable repertoire out of it. Uh, we spliced all of the variations into one like huge file as well. Mm -hmm. So, so, so your uh, idea is that people can download this and then go over it. And how would you recommend? Because as you said, there are sometimes so many deep lines you have uh, given. Yeah. It's not easy to study all of it at one go. Yes. So how how should not at all. how should someone 
go through it. And I will say that, you know, obviously it's easier to study a chessable course. Again, this is like, this is only our first course and, and we're, you know, I'm sure that we'll get better at uh, organizing the files and stuff. So I, I'd like to ask for people to cut me a little bit of slack. Um, I think the best approach is essentially to start with the main, to start by trying to get the hang of all of the moves under move 10. Mm. This is a method that I don't see recommended too often, which is that when you have a lot of moves, basically you cut everything off at move eight or nine. Mm. And you you try to figure out uh, in all of the main lines, like what are the first six, seven moves? Then when you get that far, you can already basically start playing Blitz. And I, I think that it's impossible to learn, and particularly if you haven't played the Jababalun and you're trying to pick it up from scratch. You have to start playing it online in Blitz. Like there's no right. other choice. Right. And then you play a bunch of games and every time you play a game, you come back to the file, mm. you check the moves. Uh, obviously there will be games with moves that are not in our course. In that case, you're going to have to use an engine, but we have done our very best to basically encapsulate everything. Right. Uh, right. But yeah, it's it's definitely a lot. I think somebody calculated and it was like 550 lines, um, which I don't know if that's a lot or a little, but you know, we did our best. No, that's that's just amazing. And I think I, I completely uh, agree with you. The way in which people can do it is get the course, play online, uh, and then whatever games happen, you can check it with your course. By the way, there's one question here which says, mm -hmm. um, we can create one PGN. I don't know uh, on Chessbase as a course. So I think uh, there are different PGN files or is it one like uh, in there one are, database? It, there's everything. Like there's one database that has all of the PGN files and then there are separate databases as well for every PGN. So however you want to download it, you ah, can do it. Got it. Got it. So yeah, you can, you can just download it and then go over it, keep it updated every time you play a game and... I think this is right. this is very interesting. What I would do, uh, uh, Daniel, is that I would start playing at least this in some of my games online and see uh, what people do the most and then learn from that. Well, it's amazing. Like I've been playing it exclusively as a bit of a promo because I usually play E4 too online. Mm. And okay, obviously like I've confused moves and some people are well prepared, but the amount of games that I'm basically winning out of the opening is has been staggering. Um, and I'm just trying my best to follow the course recommendation. The amount of times I've said, like, this is in the course, this is in the course. <laughs> like, you know, it's been move 15 or move 16, and I still don't, I still know what to do. And I honestly think that's an amazing feeling that everybody should experience. And uh, ultimately, like, once I put out the YouTube videos on, you know, like the perk mm -hmm. and the French, this will essentially be a lifetime repertoire uh, for the Jabal London. So that was what we developed this. Uh, in mind, we want this to be up to date, like two years from now. We want people to still be able to use it. Nice, nice. And and uh, do you think that uh, this is something which people can use it as their main repertoire? Uh, like they they learn this. One hundred percent. I I one hundred percent think that you can make a a career out of playing the Jabawa London. It's one of those openings where if you understand the ideas well. Like you can make it to 2,500, just, you know, just m destroying people in, in some of these variations. Brilliant. And and what was the sort of role distribution between you and Bortnik uh, here? Like, uh, you know, did you guys, you also work on an analyzing, he analyzed, how was it? So everything we did was practically everything we did together. Uh -huh. um, so we, I would say we worked on this since uh, the start of the new year. And we met countless times, usually for like four to six hours on Zoom. And we, one of us shared our screen and we just analyzed. And obviously like we both had our files before. So any, every idea that we had come up with is in the course. We did not hide like a single one of our novelties or ideas. Um, everything is what we actually believe is the best line, but we did everything together. Wow, brilliant. Yeah, this is very interesting. And Daniel, thank you for, uh, you know, sharing your knowledge with, with everyone. I, I think you've been doing that uh, brilliantly over uh, now. What is it? I think your, your channel is active for three years now, right? Uh, since the pandemic started. Unbelievable so. how long it's been. And, <laughs> you know, I'm just getting started, but it sometimes it feels overwhelming. But, you know, it's again, I'm doing what I love. So I'm I'm super lucky to to be able to do this and to have such an appreciative 
and the wholesome community. Uh, because without it, you know, none of what I do would have any meaning. Right. Right. No, that's true. And I think we truly appreciate what you do. And also the fact that when you make something, you are uh, honest about it. You know, you, you come forth to the people saying that, look, this this is something which is not like going to, uh, you know, everything's winning. You know, you, you objectively <laughs> say that there are lines which equalize. And I think that's what uh, the chess community needs as well. So, you know, they can... Uh, be objective and they can keep improving and thank you for for bringing this forward well thanks Sagar. yeah i mean it's uh you know ultimately just knowing that i've helped people get better really does carry me forward mm -hmm. so everything i do i just try to abide by simple rules you know i put myself in the shoes of someone who would be consuming my content in this case buying my course and i i ask myself like what would i want to know about this course before i bought it you know, what would I think is a reasonable price? And that's kind of how we reached uh, the ultimate price. We, we want people to feel like it's good value. We don't want people to feel like we ripped off their last penny and gave them, you know, just a load of like poorly organized crap. And obviously uh, there's a refund policy. Like if for any reason, anybody is not satisfied with the course, I will immediately refund the purchase. Like no questions asked. The goal here, we want, yes, we want to make money. I'm not going to lie. Hopefully people won't blame me for that. We want the course to sell, but we want people to be happy with it. We want, we want people to feel like this is making an impact on their chess development. And if it doesn't, then that means we haven't done our job and you deserve your money back. That's amazing. Well, Colin Lamb says, thank you, Danya. I bought it already. And I'm sure awesome. there will be a lot of people you, who, will, who will get it. Eric says, hey, Danya, can we end this with Kasparov talking about the Jobawa system? <laughs> you know, Wait, now my, my voice is going, so it'll be a little hard, but, you know, it's, I, you know, I bought this course, you know, and, you know, this course is honestly, you know, it's terrible, you know, it's, I looked at, you know, analysis, and, and, you know, I remember, you know, in 1984, you know, in, in Seville, Karpov, you know, was telling me, you know, the Jabalani, you know, is, it was, it was, you know, already we knew back then, you know, that, um, it, that it was bad, you know, and now this Narodicki, you know, he does, you know, this course, and, Hey, you know, don't buy this course. It's you know, it's it's a load of crap. It's course. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not. That was not the most ideal way to promote it, but <laughs> it was so funny. But it's what Gary would say. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Daniel, thank you so much. It's six a.m. already. I mean, maybe seven yeah, a.m. there. And... Seven, seven. I'll I'll hit the sack. Yeah, please, please take some rest and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sagar. Always, always great to be on Chess Face India thank and. You. Uh, Thanks so much for having me. See you. Bye. Bye, Daniel. Bye. My Bye. Pleasure. Guys, that was Daniel Naroditsky joining us. And I hope you enjoyed it. I learned a lot personally from the entire thing that he taught. I mean, I had so many questions and he was ready with all the analysis. And I'm going to go through this. Um, I think anything and everything that Daniel does has so much of quality attached to it, so much of truthfulness. Uh, and I think that that's something which is very, very valuable. So uh, do check it out. The link is in the description. And maybe later on, I can slice this entire video into smaller sections so you can also uh, learn individual lines. But for now, this is Sagar Shah signing off. Guys, thank you all for tuning in. Bye-bye.